my goal for this week's video was to produce something quote unquote normal to kind of help us to move forward in this very chaotic space and time that we are all in right now so in this week's video as you can probably tell by the title it is going to be a week of meals you guys seem to really enjoy this so let's roll up our sleeves and let's get prepping First up on the menu is this salmon with garlic, buttery, herbed mashed potato, which is really, really delicious. I have my little helper over there. He gets home quite early from all the other kids, so you'll see him a lot in this video because I like to prep as soon as I get home. So I have a bunch of potatoes here. I'm using Idaho potatoes. We peel them, wash them, and I place them into some boiling water. For the protein portion of this, I'm going to be using salmon. I believe not everyone actually ate the same meal the specific day. I had leftovers from Shabbat, but I also wanted to have an additional meal for those who didn't want it. That's why the salmon portion is not as big. Um, I'm going to be just seasoning it with salt and black pepper and paprika. And on the side over there, as you saw, I had some crushed garlic and dill and lemon juice. So it's a really quick and easy marinade. It goes really well with the fish. I smear it all onto the salmon, give it a good mush around with my fingers and place it into the oven to bake. The potatoes at this point are pretty soft so when i pierce it with the fork it goes in very very smoothly i reserved a little bit of water and i drained the rest of it out separately i had some garlic and herb butter in my fridge so i wanted to use that up as well i have a stick and a half over there of butter on the side separately now i'm going to be mushing up the potatoes with all of that butter and placing the salmon into the oven at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes i used a potato masher and mashed all of the potatoes with that garlic butter herb and the other one and a half sticks of butter this was about 68 huge idaho potatoes i believe and it came out delicious the salmon is all ready now so i'll be portioning it out and serving it to all of my little kiddos This next recipe is a fun one. It's meat hachapuris, which is a Georgian dish, which is dough filled with meat and an egg over the top. It's quite delicious, so I'll show you how I made it. This is by no means the authentic recipe for it. It's just my take on it, something that I just wanted to make using my own version of it. Um, so basically, as you saw, I chopped up one onion. I'm going to be sauteing that with a little bit of avocado oil in a skillet until it's nice and browned. After the onions saute for about a minute or two, I'm going to be adding in ground meat. Feel free to add in any type of meat that you like. I have over here a mixture of turkey and lamb. You can do this with just beef, just turkey, chicken, whatever you want. I have my little helper here again, giving me all the spices. I'm going to be adding in over here some cumin, coriander, salt, and black pepper. I had this taco sauce that I needed to use up, so I'm placing that into the mixture, but it is at all not necessary. I just needed to use it up. I'm going to be adding in a little bit of tomato sauce in here as well, about half a cup of it. So I'm going to be mixing all of that thoroughly to incorporate everything throughout the meat. I'm 
I'm also adding in about one tablespoon of paprika just to give it a depth of color and mixing that thoroughly again. Separately over here, I have my pizza dough that I made. Um, you can definitely buy this in Trader Joe's. You can buy this from a pizza shop. You can make it your own. I have a recipe for you in the description box if you are interested. After the dough has risen nicely, I'm going to be separating it and making little hachipuris with it. And this is the method. Feel free to make them as large or as small as you would like. So I take a small portion of dough, roll it out into an oval shape, place the meat into the center of it and place the whole entire thing onto a cookie sheet. And I make as many as I need for my family. I actually made them a little bit too large for all of my kids. It was too big for them to eat. They didn't want the entire thing. So next time I would make them even smaller so they could be like portion size one per child but depends obviously on your family and how much your kids eat everyone is very very different i used to make them even larger and they look very pretty and it's actually a beautiful presentation once they're all filled i egg wash everything and place them into the oven at 450 degrees 475 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're fully cooked through In the midst of all of this cooking, I have obviously all the children at home doing homework, entertaining them. So although you might not see all of them, trust me, there's a lot happening in the background. Once the khachapuris are out and they're fully cooked through, I add in one whole egg into the center of it and place them back into the oven to cook for an additional 10 minutes until the egg is set. Once they're done, I like to drizzle on some tahina or you can do a regular like tangy mayo dressing or you could just leave it as is. Also garnishing it with some greens is also a beautiful addition. If you want this to be vegetarian, you can totally do this with like mushrooms and onions. That comes out delicious as well. The whole family really enjoyed this next dinner. We had some long stem broccoli, chicken drumsticks, and rice. For the broccoli, we used these greenhouse grown broccoli that are already pre checked and are clean. I had a um, spice packet that I really needed to use up, garlic and herbs. So I placed that all over the frozen broccoli. You don't need to use this. You can just simply use some salt and black pepper. Again, there's like a theme in this video where I just really needed to use up certain ingredients. So you'll be seeing that. I sprinkle all of that on and then later on, you'll see me adding in some oil to the top and I'm gonna be baking that very nice and simple and easy. Moving on to the chicken drumsticks, I had these leek flakes that I needed to use up as well. My husband, when he goes shopping, he just picks up these random spices thinking that I will not like it. And of course I do. Then this is also another random spice that he brought, basil citrus rub. So it's not something normally that I would have around the house. But again, I wanted to use it up, so I placed it onto this chicken. And it actually came out really nice and delicious, had nice tang to it. Seasoned it also with some salt and black pepper. And it's just a very simple dish. You just sprinkle everything on with the seasoning. I sprayed in some avocado oil over the top and added in, of course, some water to the bottom of the pan so nothing gets burnt or sticks on. Next is the basmati rice. So for two cups of washed basmati rice, I'm adding in three cups of water, two tablespoons of avocado oil, and about a teaspoon of salt. 
I mix everything really well, cover everything up with a foil sheet, and bake it in the oven. So the rice gets baked at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. The chicken gets baked at the same time as everything else for a little bit longer than that, for about an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how you like it. And the broccoli goes in uncovered so it can get nice and crispy. Everything turned out so good. The garlic and herb seasoning on the broccoli came out really, really delicious. It was nice and crispy. And the chicken came out so flavorful and moist. And you'll see that the rice was very yummy and fluffy as well. This next recipe was inspired by a cooking class that we went to with my husband. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this. Um, they made this mustard covered salmon with breadcrumbs over the top. And I just had to recreate this the next day. So I have salmon here. I sprinkled on some salt and black peppers you saw. And I added in a nice amount of mustard to the top. This is, I think, a coarse mustard seed type of mustard i smeared it all on and unfortunately i only had the gluten-free breadcrumbs i think it would have come out even better with like the panko breadcrumbs with seasoning over the top but i used what i had again i had to use it up so i'm gonna be placing those breadcrumbs over the top giving it a nice coating Before placing it into the oven to bake, I did spray on some oil over the top just so that it wasn't so dry. Once the oil was sprayed, I could have definitely added in some herbs. I just didn't have any. I placed it in the oven at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Separately, I'll be making a huge salad to go along with the fish. The fish is ready and it came out really moist and delicious. I think the mustard and the breadcrumbs really locked in the moisture and it was thoroughly delicious. To season up the salad, I just simply used some black pepper and salt for seasoning. I also squeezed in a little bit of lemon juice and some avocado oil, mixed it all up. And for those who wanted rice on the side also, I had some rice left over that I gave the kids wanted so this was a thoroughly delicious meal and we really did enjoy it well that's it for our week of kosher meals family friendly dinners and i hope you guys enjoyed it i just wanted to come on here and give a very heartfelt thank you to all of my viewers and followers and subscribers here on youtube who have made these past few weeks a little bit more bearable with your very sweet and kind comments. I'm just getting emotional even talking about it. The world is a very scary place right now for a lot of people and I appreciate you all being here with me.